Right folks, I'm making my way up um, Big Knoller Lane, or whatever you call it, it's probably got Hill Lane or something. It leads to Hill Coombe, uh, Big Knoller Coombe, but I'm coming to come down Big Knoller Coombe. What I can remember of it, it is extremely steep and very exposed. So I'm going to come down it later. I'm going to branch off when I get up here and turn off, go along the Coleridge Way, because I'm actually on the Coleridge Way, head for um, Weecombe Coombe, go up Weecombe Coombe, make my way to um, Big Noller Post, go down through Hodder's Coombe. I'm either going to go down through Hodder's Coombe and come back Lady's Edge or I'm going to do Lady's Edge first. I haven't decided yet. I think I'll do the Coombe first, just in case I change direction and decide not to come back up the Coombe. I don't want to miss the Coombe at all. <sighs> I can hear the streams. Do you know what? I, I'm so relieved. It's only in the last two weeks I decided there was a way for me to get out here without ha having to ask anybody. In fact, it's a really good way to get out here without having to rush. The Taunton to Minehead and Minehead to Taunton buses are really good. They're every hour. The last bus to pick me up from Bicknoller will be, say, half past seven. That's the last one, so I have to get on it. But I'm hoping to get the half past six one, mainly because I don't want to miss the train. Um, if I get half past six, get the Taunton for seven, and then there's a mixture of trains I can get on um, because what I'm worried about when it comes to Big Noller if it's packed are they going to let me on um, that's why you can reserve your seat I think um, I hadn't thought of that people coming back from the day off from the day out could be packed on the way back couldn't it I don't know what will happen then after hitch yeah, I'll have to hitch. I haven't done that for years. But this is only over... This is only while the COVID restrictions are in place. Normally, they let, this, they let loads of people on with up to 20 people standing. Um, but I don't think they're allowing anyone to stand. I'm not sure. Right, now this is where I turn off here to follow the Coleridge route. I'll just show you the, there's a feather on the stick there. That's the Big Noller Coombe, which I will come down, and it's very beautiful. And I'm sure I'm going to really love coming down that Coombe later. So, so far, it hasn't cost me very much at all. Uh, I think it's about... about £6.50 to get here all together and back because I, I've got my bus pass so to come from Weston all the way out to this beauty is cheaper it's probably about I could probably have got Alberta out here for £6.50 and back so I'm looking at the bonuses of not having a vehicle no, ca no car tax, no insurance no MOT, no wear and tear, no petrol. Um, obviously I do miss her for camping reasons because now I've got to rough it. Or I do bed and breakfast. Which is very expensive. We're very expensive. I'm, the one I'm doing is £140 for two nights over at uh, Lynmouth. Um, it's, just a, it's just a single room with a shower. Um, and a single bed it's, uh, and something you can make a cup of tea but by basing myself there this is what I'm talking about in a week's time by basing myself there I can really get to see Lynmouth and Linton without having to carry around a massive rucksack you know so it's busing and training and walking and in fact I'll be able to do some walks 
without having to carry the tent and everything. Um, and it'll be locked up in, in the bed and breakfast I'll be using. I can still use this rucksack, I can just take out the tent and everything. Um, so that'll be really good. That'll be very good. And I can explore the route a little bit for my return journey as well. Knowing where the hills are. But today we're on my beautiful Quantock Hills. Got a bit of a hill here. Now you imagine if I had the, te the tent, the cooking gear, the tent, the, oh, none of it on its own weighs very much, but you put it all together, it weighs a bloody ton. So basically folks, this is Sheila at 68 and a half years old. Still getting out on her beautiful Quantock Hills, enjoying this beautiful day that we've now been blessed with at last. This would have been a good week actually for my walking holiday, but it doesn't work out with my money plans. So basically, it's going to be a week, a week onwards um, at least if the weather's not bad but I have to book you see I have to book they've ever advised me to book my train and I just got to keep my fingers crossed with buses it's like I've totally forgotten how difficult it could be if they don't pick me up today you know difficult it could be because there'd be hikers coming back as well wouldn't there they will be on a Saturday most people will probably just be making their way out right so this is Coleridge route I've done it the other way around I've done it this way and uh, I'm gonna turn off for a minute because in a minute there'll be some beautiful views coming in so over and out everyone this is Sheila, the 11th of July 2020, on her hiking adventures without Alberta. Over now. I just met some very, very nice, happy, friendly hikers. They're going down to have a cup of tea in the village. Um, so I'm making my way along the Coleridge Walk now, and this, just pointing out these beautiful views from here. And. I got quite nostalgic. I haven't been over on the Quantocks since the 10th of January. It's been uh, seven months. I, you know, I didn't know if I'd ever get out here again. And I couldn't when the COVID thing was restrictions were on because you weren't allowed on the buses or the trains at all. Anyway, right over there, folks, is the Minehead. I met two lovely young ladies today. We're going to do the coastal walk from Minehead to Westwood Ho. So that's mine head. And uh, there's the sea. And I feel, I just feel so thrilled um, to be able to have got out here, you know. I've, it's been seven months. I was quite happy to have a break from Holford, by the way. But when I discovered I can get over here for £6.50. Obviously, you're going to spend money buying a cake or something. I mean, I brought the picnic. I'm going to have my picnic on Holford Green. Hopefully, there'll be a seat. That won't be for several hours. Then I'll walk back. This is in memory of my sister Jude as well. Um, whenever I'm here, I can feel her with me. I can feel her. She's saying, welcome back, Sheila. Welcome back. Erin Stewart loved this walking around the Quantox. The only time I walked with her is the one when I was a child. And we kept to the coom and the streams. Yeah. I might have come up here with her later. I just can't remember everything. 
it wasn't on a regular basis. It was. It could have been just once. I can't. I really can't remember. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and through there we've got the church in Bicknoller that I videoed thoroughly last year. We're inside and out. Some of the churches will be opening again now. They were all closed during the um, serious outbreak. But we see we could have a second wave, they say. So basically, I'm trying to get in a couple of walks in case there's a sudden lockdown, because that's what they're doing. They're doing sudden lockdowns. They've only got to have so many cases and that's it. The town is shut, the city is shut. It's happened in Leicester. Now, a reason people might say, oh, we don't want to know all about that, Sheila, and your beautiful walk. But I always do a little bit about life events and what's going on in the world. I always do. So when I look back at my video, it's not just me walking along a track in the beautiful Somerset countryside. But it's referencing what's going on as well. And there's a lot going on. A lot. I'm not going to go into it all. I've just made it. Just I always mention a few things. So that's what I've done today. But I am so thrilled to be out here. I really. I can't wait to walk. I'm probably going to walk down the coom, and I might even walk up it. I'm not sure yet. I'm not doing a great deal today. This is a recce mainly. It's also testing the rucksack. Testing the straps, getting them used to my shoulders and my back, so that if, when I do do a couple of days of heavy hike, I'm a bit, my back's a bit familiar with this rucksack. <sighs> Basically, what I've got on my back now, there might be a couple extra things, but I'm not carrying a stick, I'm not bringing my umbrella. I've got spare socks and pants just in case it rains. Well, I don't think it will. Well, I didn't bring the umbrella though, did ya? I'm carrying all my water as usual. Three bottles. Um, yeah, I gave these two girls a few tips. I said, when you get to Colbone, if you have run out of water, use the, the church water tap. You have to hunt for it. Or even knock on someone's door if you're really desperate for water. I'm sure they won't turn you away. So they were really nice girls. Very young. Very students at university. Um, fresh and young and happy. And it was lovely to see them looking so great and taking on the challenge. Um, so I tried to think of all the positive things to say to them. And but I put I did point out some things like for example there's a stretch, a quite a long stretch on the coastal path where there ain't nothing like a shop. There's not you can't even get out of it. You've got to keep going. So I just I just said that to them, just so that they have plenty of water. But oh god, you know I'm, I'm back. This is so brilliant, you know. It's so brilliant just to do this. And the streams, I'm wondering if the streams are going to be... That's why I might do the ladies' coom top, top walk first. And, you know, I don't want to get my feet wet, that's the thing. I did last time, but then I had Alberta. I could just... That's the good thing about having a vehicle, is that when you get back, you can keep your change of clothes and change your shoes and everything and you can it doesn't matter what happens to you on your wet return trip to the your vehicle but when you're out like me today and I've got to rely on a bus that might reject me because of the covid they're only allowed to carry so many people because of distancing but I noticed to be quite honest there was a lot of people sitting behind somebody they hadn't done it that thorough because um, you've got somebody live far less than a metre sat behind you. <sighs> yeah, it's nice to see those young people all happy and 
lovely fresh faces, you know, um, enthusiastic and and kind looking girls. It was very kind looking. Anyway, so I'm going to turn off again. I'm going to be taking more views all the time. These lovely tall pine trees. I've still got a jumper on. I'm going to peel off slowly. Uh, I'm probably going to take my jumper off. Because I've got a t-shirt underneath, of course. Um, when it's time to go uphill. I don't think I want it on. I'm keeping it on for now. Then I'll take it off. Because it's extra weight in the bag, you see. Now, I was going to bring a great big woolly jumper and then decided that the great big woolly jumper would be too too much because I'm just testing out the rucksack at the moment and if I feel after today there's no way I could carry a tent as well then I'll have to admit to that um, and if I am going to go camping, it would be only having to walk very short distances with all that equipment. Um, I don't think I'm going... I really don't think I, I can do rugged coastal walking at my age with a big rucksack. I've got to be realistic. Obviously, I've seen other people doing it. They're usually blokes and they're usually half my age. There's a great big hill I climbed over there. I'm just trying to think of its name. I've done it though. I've been on top of that. It'll come to me in a minute. The highest hill around here. The good thing about doing a lot of the walk up here is that you've got lots of trees. There's a lot of shade. Now today, there's uh, very little wind at the moment. I think it's going to pick up later. I only got about two hours, two to three hours sleep last night because the people next door are a bit noisy. Not tremendously, but if you can hear people talking in the background when you're trying to sleep, it's, uh, and I didn't, I had to get up early. So basically, um, I think I'll sleep well tonight, put it that way. There are other little valleys you can go up. I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever been up there. But I'm not doing that. I'm not doing any of that. Yeah, it might be boggy later on. I would have thought, hopefully, it has dried up a bit. It is July. But we have had very unsettled weather, put it that way. Right, I'm going to turn off for a little while now, everyone. I'm making my way on the Coleridge Walk. And uh, it won't be long before I'm turning off up Weecombe Valley. Or Weecombe Coombe. A lovely little windy coombe. It is all uphill, but it's a steady sort of zigzag type climb. And all I do is just take my time and you get there. Then I might go down through Hodges Coombe, which I do like doing, um, or I might come back up it. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to decide about that when I get to Bitnola Post. That's when I'll make a decision whether to go down. Because I've got to I've got to come back up one way or the other. Um, I think it would be nice to go down it, actually. I think it would be nice to go down it. Well, I feel all sparkly and fresh. And it's going down. It's always easier, isn't it? I'll have to come up. I can do Lady's Edge on the way up back. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going down it first. <sighs> oh, 
Right then, I'm going to turn off now. Turning off from the Coleridge Walk. 